Hello, I'm Colt from Spit and Tax Upholstery. I'm gonna shoot a video on how to make a chair. Just a standard office chair, bottom back, two part back. Uh, this one happens to be out of really nice leather. So let's take a little journey. I'll get right after it. I'm gonna do a couple weird things to start off like, you ain't gonna be a good upholsterer unless you got a green mountain grill. And it's not, a, I'm not trying to push these guys. It's just the best barbecue I've ever had. Anyway, so let's go into the shop. Here we go. Spit and tax upholstery. There we go. You got to have elk on the wall. First of all, you got to have sergers. You got to have a wood stove, Harley Davidson. You got to have compressors. You got to have hides from the ceiling. You got to have caribou. Ah, other than that, you know, you're good to go. And you got to have a little country music. So anyway, this is one finished bottom. This is some Italian leather that I have. And there's a certain way to do it. Okay. From the ground up. This happens to be a skip to process, but I use scrim. Scrim has a top coating of a fabric, okay? And, uh, and then foam. So scrim is basically, it's got fabric and then foam. So you always want, if you're sewing with it, doing top stitches and stuff, your threads won't pull back through it. So that's what scrim is, but I like using it. It's a quality product. And I put the scrim face down when I'm doing it with this. It just gives it more rigidity. Um, a lot of people will be like, don't use that. Uh, just use straight foam, quarter inch straight foam. What are you doing? You're, you're wasting money. Well, this is quality. It gives it a rigidity. It's like a mesh. It, it, you'll see it and feel it. But um, anyway, so we, you steam out your foam first. And then you put on your scrim, but I'm gonna show you how to. Make a seat, if I can. This is my first video, bear with me. I should have an assistant, but I'm not that cool. Okay. Can you see me? Hop, hop, ho! Okay. So you have your basic, always have yourself a pair of dykes. You've got yourself the illustrious tool of the upholsterer, especially if you just started off because someone that you're gonna go work for, you're gonna use this until you can't move your hand. You're gonna pull staples all day. Oh, good grief. I hate it, but somebody's gotta do it. And uh, that's kind of a rite of passage. Yeah. The Osborne staple puller. And you got yourself a pair of nice whisks. Eight inch scissors. So I pre-cut this. Always label your stuff bottom and top or front, left and right. You can never do enough of it. If you're using pins, make sure they won't bleed through uh, whatever you're using. Leather, you don't really have to worry about that, but I recommend using chalk on leather. And uh, if you're using a piece of vinyl that's real light, use a leather or a light orange pen and mark the edges, not the field. Okay, moving on. So this is a pre-cut piece of leather for this bottom seat, okay? Always, always make sure that you take your time and uh, there's, no, there's no boogers on it. You know, you don't got nothing that's gonna put a raise on whether it's vinyl, vinyl especially, leather is skin, so it'll hide, you know, you got a tiny little piece of lint that's pretty heavy, that'll, sh that you'll feel that. Anyway, make sure everything's clean. So, we're gonna start off, I'm using this Dacron, just because I tear down on this table and uh, you know, I keep everything clean. 
always think clean because if you can work like my shop, my, my shop is spotless all the time. And that um, enhances your dexterity, perfection, and excellence. I'm a Christian, so I give all glory to God and it's, uh, it's excellence. So everything, make sure everything has its place. See how that's lined up? You got your scissors, your, your dikes, your uh, staple puller. Every, everything is just laid out for, and then you work well. So moving on. Okay, I already put the foam on. There's a way to do that. I'll show you how to do that in another video. So today, everything is clean underneath. Boom, boom, boom. Let's lay down. I'm going to go with my front forward. I'm marked here on the front so I can do that. Split the difference, okay? You got your leather. Don't be intimidated by leather. It is one shot, one kill. Make sure that you cut it accordingly and you have enough extra. Always give yourself about three inches. That's a price you pay for being stylish. So, you know, I mean, you can, you can push it down, you can pull it up and see if you're going you're gonna to meet your margin. You just want to come right on the edge you want to keep it tidy always so you don't get a backtrack and clean anything up. So, boom, boom. That's a little, little fat on the top. So my edges, my edges, boom, boom. So, because you have pleats on the bottom and the back, the front and the back. So, with this leather, I use a foam lock for these kind of applications. You're going to come up, like I said, center it. And then rock your piece up. Take your foam lock. Just in the center. Okay, you don't want to go over the edge of this piece. You just want to glue this in the middle. Okay, so it won't rise up again. You don't want to go over the edges because you want to pull this leather. You want to give it room to be able to, you know, like I said, it's skin. It'll stretch. It's like vinyl. So you come up right to the perimeters and don't go over the edges. On the corners, you want to go a little, a little close to the edge, but basically, and, and you don't got to go real heavy, just light enough. Come close to your edges, all four edges, close, but not over the hump because then the leather can't freely slide because after this, we're gonna spray silicone around the edges. A little trick. The reason why this video is valuable. So, boom. Then you come underneath. Little trick, you wanna get right on it. Some people say let it tack up. Now you wanna get right on it because that'll give you a minute to move it in case you have to. Come up the center with your hand from underneath. Boom, okay? Then you can come over the top and then you can pull it with your hand in the middle and then find your perimeters. See that? See how? See that? And I put like that on right in the left hand, pull it tight over the edge so it caresses or careens, excuse me, fancy word. Boom, boom. And so you want to move it while you can. Boom, boom. You know you got your middle flat and then you come back. You only got a few seconds. That's why I say, Move with this stuff and, and then caress your edges. The edges here, you want to you pull them tight and caress them over the edge. Okay? Pick it up, pull it back, pull it over the edge, and then push, push out, push out. So you're just getting that hump in there. This is just an upholstery job. I'll show you ground zero later if you like my work. So, you can see that hump you got there. You see that? Yeah, well that'll hold now. But you 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 have to you have to do it like this. So you can see that you got plenty just enough around the outside edges. So we're going to start in the front. So now we're glued. You can run your hand across it. That heats it up. Helps that tack hold. So that, that, that's not going anywhere. Especially if you did it like I did it with the scrim. And the same principle with the scrim. Okay. 
you got your wood and you usually got quarter inch or half inch and either they put a piece of Dacron on top of it or they put vinyl or leather immediately. I like to go wood, half inch or quarter inch, whatever you're doing, and then like a seat, I'll, I'll do a whole piece, a whole piece of Dacron. This, this you can split it in half, okay? I use lots of half pieces like on the back of the chair, which I'll show you in the video that follows this. So, we've tacked up real good. So now, boom, boom. Three eighths inch, this is a Bia, that's what I prefer. Get yourself a good hose. Garage like this, 30 by 30 shop. I got it coming down from the top, little eye hooks. Stays out of your way. Like I said, everything has to go like this. It's all fluid, nothing in your way. Sweep your floors, clean your shop, good music. You cannot fail. So, start in the back, we'll pull it up, we'll come in the middle. See how that perimeter comes around with my foam? I'll go one, two, three, then I'll turn my piece, then I'll come around, I'll pull the outside out, away from me, and then run my hand across the bottom, and just, see that? You, you kind of give it a tug outwards, but not too much to where you distort it, okay? So I go in the middle, then I come on the outside, just in front of the foam. And then I'll come through and I'll inchworm my way back. Okay? If you get a little wrinkle like that, you can come up and pull that staple in the, in, in the end. The, the fact of the matter is, you want that to cascade and arc perfectly. So, start in the middle, and you come to the edges, and then you pull, and you come up, but not, not towards the end completely. Because you want a pleat there. I'll show you in just a second. So then you work your way back. And if you have to, you can do it right away. It just, you can pull those staples in the middle, grab your dikes, give them a slow rock. And start in the middle again. And split the difference every time. And then, then everything's flat. You can and then I, I like to come back through. Don't trim this until you're done. Okay, so it's glued down, so it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna move. So that's our back. Come up here to the, uh, the front. Kind of lean into it. Pull it up. Got a nice flat bone. One, two, just in front of your foam. And then come up to the end, and then give it a little tug. Pull your hand around the bottom, boom. Don't go quite to the end. Boom, same thing on the other side. Pull it out, come underneath here like this, and make sure it pulls. You'll see it arc. Come right to the end, and then inchworm your way back. It's hide, it'll pull, it'll stretch. The confidence will come when you lay a staple. Lay a staple like you need it. Bam! You know what you're doing. Bam! Bam! Stretch it. Start in the middle, work your way out. Make sure. Flip your piece, make sure it looks right. Throw an eyeball on it. See how perfect that is? Boom! Perfect. Okay, now over to the adjacent side and as I mentioned earlier you know to make it easier with leather and foam sometimes you want to take a little silicone 221 boom boom there you go I don't use it all the time but it can make your life easier so boom run my hand under that contour come on up over here Boom, bring it right above, right in the middle. Drop, stretch to my forward there. Put one there, and then inchworm my way back. Boom, same thing over here. 
And like I said, don't go to the end. Don't, don't just jump right into the end. You got a little wrinkle there. But yeah, you'll have to pull staples every now and again. But see how flat that is now? And you split the difference. Create your own crease. Boom. You don't ever want to crease to breach this edge. You want that flat. Boom. Go over the other side. And you'll see how the foam You don't have to pull it crazy tight. You want to keep, you don't want to distort your foam. So, and then again, we pull back to this edge, not quite to the end, because I'll show you why in a second. And then you're stapling your way back to the middle. Okay, and then see that, you stretch, come underneath, pull up, but gently, you'll see how it lays, but you want it to lay away from you. Clear the foam, and then inform your way back and manipulate the hide as you come back. You see, okay, we got this and that. Two staples. It happens, that's, that's, that's how it works. Come in the middle, boom, and then split the difference. And then staple it all the way down. You grab those little those little pieces. Always keep your staples in a perfect row. It creates good habits. It's just like witness marks. When you're sewing two pieces together, you have little notches. We call them witness marks. My professor said, witness marks are your friends. And he had it above his door in his office. So try to keep a regimented profile, just step by step fluid motions but you see look at that that's perfect look at those corners of, or those, those 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 arcs those edges are flat they're correct that's correct so look what you got you got these boogers on the ends so okay that's our back you see our back here so the industry It's an aesthetic value. So you're looking at the back of the chair. You see how those sway in? Okay? So the side of the leather comes down to the back and the pleat faces out towards behind you. See that? See that? Faces out. This is the back of the chair. Front of the chair is what? Okay, it's another aesthetic value. You're looking directly at the chair. So you want if you're looking at the chair, you want them to fold out and away from you. It's always an eye thing, okay? So you staple under and you fold out, okay? See the edge of that? That's the front of the chair. That's the back of the chair, see? Right, right. So. <coughs> And this is the trick. That's why you didn't staple all the way to the front. So, little trick. You wanna, you wanna do a mock-up pleat first. See where you stand. You wanna fold it in on itself and go, okay, where am I at? Your side border here, that's where your pleat, you're gonna want that to come back, see that? So, what you do is you're gonna pull and and tug and twirl, you see it? See that right there? Boom, boom. You're gonna, you're gonna come up into an arc. And as you come, you're gonna pull staple, pull staple, pull staple, pull staple. So you're creating an arc. Okay, but you don't wanna go too high. Creating an arc while you're pulling forward. And I'll show you the importance of that. Oh, we're out of staples. So, we got an arc. And you see the little pleats that you acquire as you come around that arc? 
you'll pull, staple, it folds in on itself, in on itself, in on itself. So you're creating a, a pleated arc. And how and why that is, is now, see how I come back and my pleat in the front? This lines up perfect, okay? And you can adjust it accordingly, but there's a relief cut underneath. So, what I'll do is I'll, okay, I like what I'm looking at there. And then underneath, you see that underneath? You see that? You have to remove that part of it and how you do it so the pleats folding down so you pull it up in front of you start at the top and then cut your way back at an arc and down see that relief cut and then you remove the salvage and then you trim that arc you just did come back to the middle you've already did your staple so you're good See that? Okay. So now, I came a little far back towards my corner, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose a couple staples. Do it real. Always dig in deep once, and then just, just bark them up, so you don't mar your, your leather. Okay. See how you got those wrinkles out of there? Boom. So you make your pleat. You make your pleat. You fold it back. And that's your, that's your line there. You did your relief cut. And you, do, and you take out that salvage so it lays flat. It has to look good. And we're looking here and we have, we want to take a little bit more out of that because it shows. So good. Boom. There we go. Bam. Yep, that's our front. Matches that one. Lowest profile you can get in the front. Okay, you want them even. You want them to come in just a little, but be flat and straight. And I like it. So, you pull it over, you fold it down, you find your mark, you come back over here, and then you start where you're left off on your other staples and you complete your arc. And then manipulate that hide with your hands to where it's flat. Everything has to be flat. You come around that corner, sometimes you have to take a couple staples out. Okay, because pleats, they, they change the dynamics of things. Like I said, start in the middle then, and work your way back. Bam. Pleat. Okay. Rockstar. And it's perfect. And it's beautiful. And with leather, you know it's real leather if you got pleats in the front and pleats in the back like that. Because with a heat gun, you can tug and pull and manipulate vinyl to where it's just, it's flawless. But you can't do that with leather. Sometimes you get lucky if it's thin enough, like one ounce leather. This happens to be a three ounce Italian. And that ain't happening. And it, would, it wouldn't look right. You would distort all the work that you put into the foundation, okay? You're padding and it just... But this, this, this one is just how to do... Just a basic, pretty much, arc square chair bottom. And uh, so, don't ever cut your, cut your uh, salvage off until you're sure. Until you're sure, you know. So, we're going to start over here. And we're gonna do our other pleat on our left side. Stage left, looking at a, a piece of furniture, you got a stage left, stage right. Like you're looking at a stage. And that's how you mark your stuff, then you'll always know. So, I'm gonna do a mock-up pleat, see where I stand, and to see how far my arc can go up. And then I do my relief cut, and then I fold over 
and then I have that front pleat, okay? So that's what you do. You come over and always keep a visual. You got one that you've already done. You can see they all have to match. Boom, boom, never waver. So we pull that forward like that and then we'll make a little pleat. All right, I like that. That looks good. You come back and pull those staples to get that flat later. But at first, that's to tell you how far you can go with your arc. So you want to come up with your arc. Boom. See that? See that pleat? I'm going to make a little baby pleat on top of that. And then another little baby pleat. And then I'm going to check my top. How does it look? Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to cut this all away. And that will help it lay flat. So I like that. So my eye tells me, I'm gonna start at the, the top, come down and then come in and then out. And then that is so, you see that arc I'm talking about there? How it comes up and dives in on the front of the chair. It comes up and dives in. Okay, and then the pleat lays over the top. You cut out that salvage piece, lay it down over the top, which is this. See that? And if it's wrinkled up here, don't be confused, because all you gotta do is pull, you know, like three staples and boom, and it's high, so it'll wiggle back and forth a little bit. But your pleat is your main thing. So as long as you're square and you're flat and you're not distorted, which we're not, make sure they're even on both sides, which they are now, I can see. You pull it tight. Yeah, I like it. And try to follow the contour when your your staples along the margin come up you want them to arc it the same way you see how we got that wrinkle there that doesn't fit remove this staple this staple maybe that one you never know how many you're going to have to get rid of gently pull them out some of them break so then you come back split the difference you know, manipulate your, your piece. Run your fingers up. See how that, that changed things? Look at that. That just perfectly lays flat. Start in the middle again. Keep in the row. Come down here. Boom, boom. Right there. And on my edges, I like to double up. Just in a couple spots. Doug, you see that? Look at that. Perfect. Perfect. Matches there. So that's what we do. Boom. And that's our front. And then you come through. After you make sure. Well, oh, there's a little wrinkle there we can get rid of. There's no reason to ever have a wrinkle, ever, ever. Pull it tight, split, go in the middle, split the difference, and then come down and staple your way all the way down the front of your piece. There's a wrinkle, get rid of that. Pull it tight, come in the middle, split the difference. Boom, boom. And that's, that's good. So, and then come down and ride that staple margin all the way down. So you want it always clean because you never know how it's gonna lay in the frame. And then plus you have a backing. Sometimes it's a, a, a fabric backing or it's a cotton mesh or it's a piece of cardboard, you never know. But that has to be tidy too, black bottom. A lot of the people call it. But you see that? That's the front. Pleat, pleat, okay? They fold in and over. So on the edges, 
when you're looking at the front of the chair, you see that. Okay? Perfect. That's what you want. Now our back. You see how our back is all loosed out like that? Okay. You see the backs, how we do the backs? The backs wrap around the side because you're looking at the side of the chair. Then you want that pleat going down in front of you. Okay? Or, you know, some people will, will do them to where they go away. Depends on how thick it is. But for the most part, that's it. Over the side towards the back, over the front towards the front. And the same principle. So, <clears throat> what we do is we bring, here's that other arc, it's just a reverse arc. So we pull it out away from us and you push and pull and staple, push and pull and staple, okay? And you see how I created that arc? It's another arc. Now look, I pull that, leave enough room. One too many. These are just some of the fundamental principles of how you manipulate fabrics. And leathers are different than vinyls. You know what I mean? Um, Always come up, you're always watching, you're always looking. Yeah. You see you can get your you can get your set on the back. You might have to come over here. Because like I said, it's leather, it's alive. So that gives you a little wiggle room. But you don't have to, you don't want to distort anything. It should always flow. So take your time. Find your pleat in the back. And you're going to look at your other ones. You're going to want them to match. You don't want to go too far into the field with your pleat. You see how it's just right on the edge? Boom. Well, so you find your pleat. And use the top, push the top to get your pleat to lay right. And see, that's it. You're already stapled underneath. Bam. And you're good to go. But before you do that, you want to come back and at an angle. You want to get rid of that salvage. And then, once you know you already got your mark, you can come back and get rid of your wrinkles real quick. Start in the middle. Above the foam, split the difference. Lay it flat. There's no tolerance for distortion up here. You see that? See how flat that is? Always remember that, your perimeters. Now watch for stray, uh, stray staples, because <coughs> your hands are your money. And one little nick will put you through misery for however long you heal. So anyway. Boom, boom. This is the back of the chair. So we're going to the side. Bring your top down. Oh, and it goes back as far as you can before the back wall. 
make sure she's laying flat. Bring her up. Yep. And then on this one, we're gonna have to come back a little bit further, which happens. get ourselves to lay flat so always come up that's why you don't glue these edges around the edges just the field in the middle then you silicone these edges it'll give you see that look at that wiggle room and then you just pull it to the edge and it finds its own gate so you're happy with that you come back stay in line with your staples just in front of the foam nothing changes Try to know where you've already stapled so you can go in front of that. That's where you're not stacking staples and you know not getting a good purchase. So, you know, sometimes you gotta backtrack a little bit. Like I said, it's high, man. Okay. Boom boom. Pull up, double check. Nice. Perimeter, start in the middle, boom, split the difference, come back towards you. And finish with the forward push. We got one more little wrinkle there. I'm weird about it. I can't ever let it go. It's right or it ain't. Doesn't leave my shop unless it's perfect. I just I'll have I'll have nightmares. Yeah, that's another thing too. You'll go to sleep and you'll dream about the I spend like you know sometimes 15 hours in here and uh, I have dreams about this stuff. It kind of sucks. But uh, I love my job. So anyway, boom boom. Oh yeah, and then on the edges, you know, just, just where the pussy hits, stack it up with some staples. You don't gotta get crazy, but just enough. Just enough. Because, you know, this is leather. This this stuff ain't going anywhere. You know, and then you always manipulate, come back, and you just boom, boom, boom. Front, there's the side. Perfect. Perfect. So this, the back, boom, because you're looking at the side of the chair, and all you want to see is a pleat. You don't want to see the inside of a pleat. And you're looking at the front, goes straight down and that anyway that's what we do so pretty handsome huh one more okay rinse and repeat okay boom boom so we got that whole reverse arc thing going. Just make sure it matches your other one. You line it up first, find out where she is. You don't want to go too far into the field with your pleat, so you push her up. You've already made that possible because of that silicone and you haven't glued it. So boom. there so you got kind of a mark there so you know you're good there once you find your mark you know you're sticking sticking and moving and you have to pull staples to, to get it to lay right that's why I always when you're first laying it down every like you know I don't know every inch and three quarters go ahead and put a staple down because especially towards the, the outside because you're gonna have to like this you're gonna have to come by and, and fix it but always remember when you pull a bunch of staples pull it tight to where you got your it looks good on the outside start in the middle BAM and then one to your left one to your right one to your left one to your right you know spread it out and it'll lay right don't pull too hard to where it contorts anything. You gotta keep your eye right. 
but we're looking good here. Our plates are lining up. Boom, boom. Yeah, and we're good there. Then you come back through and you see if you need any, any relief cuts. I can see that I do. Missing a spot, make sure you drop a staple in. Yep, yep. All right, we're good, we're good, we're good. Always double check, always, you know, visual, always, always look back and see. Am I right? Am I right? Am I looking good? You know, and then you just make sure that you, you know, that, that those pleats match. And then your undercut is where you need it. Come back through and then set your pleat into that arc. That first two, boom. Like I said, you're going to have to do staple pulls. You have backtrack. But this will, this will become fluent. I mean, you'll just see how that, that wrinkle, gone. You run your thing, your, your, your edge. Start in the middle once again, just to the edge of the foam. Always to the edge of the, don't go crazy coming inside. That's going to haunt you. Split the difference. Even pull, front and back, right in front of your foam. One there in the back. Now one there in the front, one there in the back. Boom, another one in the front, line them up, stack them up. And there you go. Bam. There's our front. Pleats in the front. There's our back. Side pleat. Side pleat. And they just happen to match perfectly the other. So that's how you upholster a, a leather chair. Most people think leather. Oh my God. You panic. It's just another medium. Don't let this intimidate you. Find out your principles. What am I doing? It's a chair. Always remember, or, you know, whatever. Break it down into uh, what it really is. So now that it's nice and clean, everything is always clean. You see how they're always clean, and you hug that perimeter, but you give yourself just enough. See the bolt holes? Okay, that's what that is. Everything's accessible. And then I like to put a nice felt. This particular piece has this old beat up piece of cardboard. Okay. I don't like it. I use, I use a really high quality mesh. If I can find it, here it is. <sighs> So this mesh, this is almost like what they use, like fiberglass. It's, uh, it's awesome stuff. Some of it's better than others. They got black bottom that's real. You can just tear it. Now this, this is a heavy duty stuff. Looks awesome. And, and it lasts and it'll breathe. They got these holes in there. So when you sit on the cushion, you know, it's, uh, it doesn't pillow on you and feel weird. It just relaxes as you sit down on it. Well, this does the same thing. It'll just go right through this. Yeah. So this is junk. I'm not putting that back on it. This is for a dentist friend of mine uh, in the Spokane Valley. Um, 
We do lots of stuff for him. We do all the dentist offices around here. I've mentioned their names, but I haven't asked their permission. So, yeah, you know, and it's, uh, like I said, I'm working on this Dacron because you just, you don't want nothing to mar this. You could have, you know, there could be a staple in your teardown fabric and, you know, it's, you're done. You can't scratch nothing. You take your time. Take your time. You know, and, and give it your all. And give it your best. So, okay, so once that's there, I will take my backing. And it's the same, front and back, doesn't matter. I was, I'm weird, I like to go from the back to the front. And then I'll use chalk. And uh, I'll just hug the edge. You know, maybe about a half inch out around with a piece of chalk. Just run the chalk down the perimeter and that'll give you the salvage that you need. Okay, lift it up, put a B on it, put an F on it, back, front. Cut it out. And as you go into the upholstery world, you'll find out that measurements are key. Trust your measurements. You know, just like if you're an archer like me, trust your, trust your, your pin sight. You sight it in your bow at 20, you scoop back to your 30. Trust, trust, trust what you do. Trust who you are. Praise God. Okay, so, bam. There's my front. There's my front. I put my chalk side down. Good, good, good. Okay, okay. And, use a little staples. So, what I do with this is I'll start on the top. And I'll just fold it in just enough and I'll, I'll create my arc, okay? That's what I like about this stuff, is it'll take a crease. Okay, and you want to come back in about a half inch from your perimeter, your outside perimeter. It is key. The bottom of your chair is as important as the top. Be advised. So, you center your piece, you come up, one wide. One wide, come down, bend your piece half inch in. You don't want to see it from the outside of the chair. About every two inches before you do your, your side. Boom, boom. Stop about two inches from the outside edge. Make sure you're a half inch in so you can't see it from the outside. Boom, two inches in, one, two, boom. Okay, you got that? See how that looks? Don't look like anything because you can't see it. Boom, spin to the back, always to the back. Okay. Before you staple down your back, pull your piece up. Boom, boom. Get an eyeball. You see, there's your bolt holes. Always bring it back up, get a visual, chalk them. Boom, boom. Get a visual, chalk them. Lay it flat so you know it's true. Chalk them. Do you follow? All right. Because you can come back with a razor knife and just X those and drill right into them. You got, you know, you can trim them out with your little fancy scissors like I, I got every scissor known to man. But anyway, so lay it flat. Boom, boom, boom. Come up. You're good to go. Pull that back to where you're about a half inch down. Lay it flat. One. One, about an eighth of an inch on the inside. Boom. Bring that down. Don't staple all the way to the end, but just make sure it's in every two inches. Make sure you're on the leather though. You see, you got quite a bit of leather there. That's why you gotta come a half inch in. Two inches from the outside, and then start your, start your push. Boom, okay? 
So, uh, boom, boom. The side, same thing. Start in the middle, half inch in. You don't want to have a, a visual from the outside edge. Two inches apart, boom, boom. You got a spot. Make your, you know, you make your pleat, make your pleat to the front. Doesn't ha doesn't matter. No one's gonna see it. You just fold it accordingly to where it's hidden, and it's flat. Above all, it's flat. And you're on the leather. You come back through. And you don't have to staple these like da 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 da. You know, a million staples. You're about every two inches. You know, as long as it's flat and it's pulled tight. The sides, the front, the back. You know what I mean? And, 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 and the, the, you just, you want it to look nice. You know what looks nice. Get a good pleat. You want it to look nice and, you know, hit your corners. And then, boom. Okay, again. Push it, pull it tight, half inch from the outside. It's a visual. Your bottom is as important as the top. Anything else, work your way back, pull off your little dust bunnies or whatever you're, just make sure that that pleat is hidden, but you want it to be aesthetic as much as you can get it. You might have to manipulate it a little bit, but uh, boom. And it has to be flat. So corner, inside corner, eight, one. Whoa. And then this end, Get that pleat towards inside, perfect. Sometimes they just, you get a freebie. But you don't have to put a million staples in, okay? Boom. There's a chair. And, uh, you know, I'm getting $800 for two of these chairs. A back. This is the bottom, and then two small backs. It's a good trade. There's money in this. You can do this. Take your time. I'm going to be sending these videos out regularly now. If you can bear with me, I'm not real good at this. But I'll show you how to do it right, and I'll save you a bunch of steps. The next one, we'll start from ground zero. I'll do some other stuff. So we'll do boat seats. We'll do hot rods. Uh, I do everything. And... Uh, I'll show you. I'll show you how to do it right. And and there's so many weird little steps that I'll save you. That's why you should watch these these uh, these videos of mine. You know, I want to help you guys. All right. So God be with you. In nomine Padre et Filii et Spiritui Sancto. I'm Colt Allen. Spitting tax upholstery. I'll see you around like a donut. <laughs>